Oh, Seamus. Seamus O'Grady. Mm. You were a Westport man. You're really coffee, yeah? Westport man, yeah. Mm. Red born and reared, yeah. Reared dropping the lane on the road in the workhouse, what was called the workhouse at that stage. Mm. Uh, my grandmother came from Clare Island. Mm. Grandfather came from Minishini. And they were the first occupants of that house just down the road there next to me now. That would be 1911. 1911. And uh, we've seen five generations of Grady's in that house. Still there, Richard and his son. Richard's son is the fifth generation in his family, in the one house. So, mm. you see, I immigrated to England after coming out of uh, Castlery. It was there for 18 months. With the TB? In the sanatorium, yeah. Mm. No back to me at that time. And uh, immigration, 57, 58. And uh, I came back, uh, I was working in Lloyd's in Sharon to the underwriting room for, for nearly 10 years. I came back then to Westport. And where did you go to school? Well, in Westport CBS. And how far did you go on the education? Leaving cert. Leaving cert. I got sick at leaving. The year before I did the leaving, I got sick. And I was 18 months in Castlery. But you did do the leaving cert? No, I didn't. I got sick that. Well, you got sick, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. And you went to Lloyd's. Was it easy to get a job yeah, in Lloyd's? I went to Lloyd's. I went to London then to my uncle. And I got a job in Lloyd's uh, underwriting room with an insurance broker firm. Mm. And uh, and what were you doing in there? I was an insurance broker. Insurance broker, yeah. And, uh, and was it easy to get into Lloyd's that time without leaving cert? Uh, well, I had... Uh, it was. I had, you know. You could read and write and do the sums and all the math and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I was only employed with Willis Fay, but they were a larger, well, probably one of the largest insurance broken firms in the world at that time. And um, I uh, spent I think, about ten years, and I qualified as an associate of the Charter Insurance Institute after about four years' exams. And I came home then to the te Westport Textile Factory. And who was teaching you in the National School here now? Who was teaching me in the National School mm. here? Well, it was Jimmy Hughes. He taught uh, you, didn't he? He did, yes. And uh, another man that taught me as well, the other Christian brothers of days, in the National School, was Jimmy Hughes and Brother Mahoney, Brother O'Sullivan, uh, and Jeremy Sherry's father taught him was but for a while as well, the footballer. And what was it like? Was it strict? <laughs> Just a tough, yeah. It was, a, it was strict, yeah. And the secondary school, they would have Mike Mahoney and a few Christian brothers. And who else is in, in the... That's my man, and who else is there? And James Woody, uh, they had the shop on, they had a bookshop there on news agents on where McLaughlin's is now. Well, there was a bookshop there, there yeah, was. a bookshop, yeah, and uh, his son was a chemist in uh, Dockwood, has played in gold for Westport United for a good number of years. And you said you lived up, up near the workhouse? Yeah. And, was, and was it intact when your time? Did you ever see it intact? No, I never saw it intact. I had photographs of it, no, I never saw it intact, no. And it was knocked down when you were there, was it? Oh, it was, and all the houses were built at that stage, yeah. yeah. Do you know when the houses were built? Uh, no, but I had photographs of them. I don't know when. I, I, I had photographs of actually when they were being built. Mm. Uh, I'd say, I, no, I, would, I would say now that at that time there wouldn't have been, that would be, I was born in 36. I suppose uh, there wouldn't have been that long open now. Mm. Mm. There's quite a number of people that, uh, guards and that all lived in that old area at the time. Mm. What like in your young? Westport was, uh, funnily enough, I think it was the most industrialised town in the west of Ireland for its size, for had a population, mm. than any town in the west of Ireland because we had, uh, when I was growing up, you had, well, you had Irish, you had Irish Own, you had the boot factory, and you had last time, there were three kind of unique factories, or the Cozo, as they called it, mm. unique factories in the town that you didn't have. But apart from that, there was a lot of unemployment, mm. a lot of immigration, <laughs> you know, and it, it was. You know, I immigrated, I could get no job when I was finished, and a lot of the lads that I knew going to school, they all immigrated. Mm. Some came back and some didn't. And when you went over to England, what did you think of it when you arrived there? Was it, were you, well, I... I, I like, you, you arrived into London, did you? I arrived into London, but my uncle let me at the time, but I uh, was, soon learned by experience. Mm. You know, there's nothing like a great experience, because I remember the first interview, and I met quite a number of Westport lads, people that I knew there, and... Uh, when I applied for it, I got, I had the bags of one thing, but I always had something in my mind that whatever I would do, I'd like to come back to Ireland again, or mm. back to Westport, uh, with that in mind. So when I applied for a job that was in Willis Faber with the insurance brokers, they were very big at the time, and still are, and uh, they, they were done in, I was living in West London, and they were in East London. Mm. So my uncle said, the best way you can find out how to get there is get on the number 11 bus. I mean, you followed for so long, asked the conductor to tell you where to get off. Yeah. So I did that. And I went into a multi story building for me interview, blah, blah, blah. And then that's how I started. But when you arrived in London, you saw these buildings and high buildings and that. Were you impressed or were you awed by it? Or... Well, 
you were awed by it. Yeah, I yeah. think it was a different culture, different life. You know, it was a different, a completely different world to what we were living like here. Jordan. And did you hang out with the Irish or the English? I you, you, you were in the, you were... Oh, no, in, in, no, they're all English. Yeah, they're all English. All English. I, I met an lad from Donegal who subsequently died. I met two lads, two, one lad from Donegal and his brother-in-law, and the rest were all English. All English lads. And they accepted you pretty well, did it? Did they, Jack? Did they, did I had no problem, no. No problem. And did you ever hang out, hang out with the Irish in the bars now when they were all there at it? Well? Didn't drink until it was about 27, 28. Oh, okay, right. Well, I used to go to the Irish clubs, all right, to the Gary Owen and Cricklewood and all those Irish dance halls, mm. people. That's where I met my wife, but I didn't drink for three years after. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you enjoyed it? Or oh, did, I, or did enjoy, you? I did enjoy it, certainly yeah. did, yeah. I went to most football teams, matches, football matches every Saturday, one thing and the other. I got married there, all. My family are all English born. And were you homesick? Yeah. Were you homesick? Ah, yeah, I always wanted to get back. Yeah. My wife was the same, yeah. Could, finally, I'm sure all her family came home. They were all in England, nurses and one thing and the other. They all came home. And do you know the way they say that immigration is a terrible thing? Did you find it a terrible thing? I, I don't think I thought about you it. You think about it? I didn't think about it, no. About it. Uh, you know, it's, um, I thought about it in, in, in certain aspects. I used to work with my uncle in the pub in England at the time, and it did frighten me by time because I saw a lot of Irish lads, you know, Saturday night or Friday night or Thursday night or pay night and come Monday morning. Oh, God. Oh, God. You yeah. know. And my uncle used to say to me, he said, never ask them for money. They'd be back on Thursday. And they and the, the pay, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And I used to walk like in the pair time and I was going between going to school and one thing and the other. And he said, you don't ever ask them for money. He said, they'll come in to you on Thursday. And they'll just say, Seamus, what are you here? That's it. They were honourable. Very. Very then, yeah. I've seen the case of the type of whip round to parents by tie or something, that if, with the, the price of the vote or the fare or whatever, to be whipped round the pub mm. and get them tugged out and sent home. So in that respect, I've seen both sides of it. I mean, many years did you spend there? Sorry? Many years did you spend there? I went in 57. I came, uh, 57, I came back in 66. Oh yeah, the good run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now why did you come back to Westport then? I came back to Westport Texas. Oh, did you? Yeah. It was a job advertised on the BO News, and uh, I applied for it, and I got it. And just a uh, kind of a production controller job. So I had a house, my own house in England at the time, and this is my father's fields here, so he said, if you want to come home, he said, just a site there, you know, to what you want to and build your own house in it. And a nice one. So I had my own house in England, yeah. I sold it, and uh, my kids were English born. Richard actually wasn't, I was home before Richard was born. Mm. He's actually 50 today, so I was home at that particular time. And is there much difference between Westport of today and West, Westport of yesteryear? Ah, uh, there's a big difference. The big, the big difference I saw, particularly down the key area here. Mm. From here to the key, there was nothing in the key at that time. And now it's a completely developed town. Big well, difference. there's mostly land between here and the key now. <coughs> there's a, there much most, land? No, there's mostly land. Were well, there many houses in it? Well, no, you can, you can take, there was no houses here, right? Mm. You can take, well, first of all, Take the dry cleaner's place. There was a vacant site there mm -hmm. where Michael John Callan was living. Yeah. What did you call it? The dry cleaner? Sorry? Oh, yeah, where it is now. Yeah, the dry yeah, cleaner. The dry there, yeah, yeah. That was a vacant site. Mm -hmm. And then you had the Brennan's had some land around there. John yeah. Hastings built a house there. You know where Brennan's are living. You know, John the Garage. Yeah, no, yeah. That's his house there. Mm -hmm. He was living on the Leonard Road before that. And then you moved on down here and you had this land. Mm -hmm. Then you moved on to the last house in Davids mm -hmm. Terrace where Ger Hoban. And all those, so that was all empty. That was mm. all where Springfield is. That's all, that was all empty. That was all fields, all, just they were all green fields, fields, yeah. All green fields, green fields, yeah. okay. And uh, down here in Westlands, that was all green fields, mm. yeah. Is it better or worse than it was in the old days? Oh, Westport now, yeah. oh, it's a lot better. Yeah. better yeah. Well, uh, putting it this way, going back not to my time, but the time the key bank clerks were here and the boats were coming in, mm. but they were the affluent people at the time, the key people. Mm. Because they were working on the boats and that. And uh, what did you say? The the key bank clerks. <coughs> that's what they called them. Yeah, because well, they had the boats coming in, and there yeah. was a big act. The port was active that time, and both exports and imports. And uh, of course, that faded away. And uh, then you had in mass immigration, and you had all the warehouses closing down, and uh, you know all, all that. But you know, like where Jerhoba has since went down there, that was a. Stanton's land, that was a greenfield site, like, and mm. you had nothing, when you passed down around the kid, they were all empty warehouses. There were big warehouses there one day, weren't there? Big warehouses. In your all, time? Uh, no, they were all empty. All they were, empty. But they, they were up, standing up on your... Oh, they were all you standing, were... both, on, both on the right hand side going down, mm. there was a big warehouse there, and all those houses where 
the, the, the apartments are on the yeah. way into Westport House. They were all derelict buildings, but they were mm. all ex -ware, old warehouses and along by the Hellum and all those places along there. Apparently the one on the right hand side was huge, was it? Be very tall. With the one on the way no, down. On the way down, yeah. Yeah, it was where uh, Sean A. Manning was. Yeah, where the house are. Right? Off the centre. That was a big, 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 big one, yeah. Yeah, there was a big basement, a big, you know, under the cellars and all that. That was a big place. Yeah. Have you any idea when it was knocked down, no? I had an idea. It should have been. Um, ah, I can't remember. I'm going to, I, was going, I was going to school at the time. It would be, I suppose, 40s or 50s. 40s, yeah. Late 40s, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, was there any crackdown on the key? Harry? Was there any crack down the key? There was nothing in the key at the time. Nothing in the key. No, the McBride had the pub with the hell of us now. Mm. And there was a, a pub across the road, Jack Hennessy had the pub there in my time, and Miss Cafferty had the pub with the towers. Is. With the towers, the Cafferty the towers is, there. Is, yeah. And where was Hennessy's? Hennessy's was, would be somewhere along where, um, after you pass, round where the, the hotel is now, somewhere along the end of the. Oh, there you are, okay. Yeah. And we, <laughs> when uh, you were. Living around here, were you aware of Major John McBride now? Had you heard about him or was there any talk about it? Ah, yeah, or had it all died down at that stage? Well, it did, um, it did, it did, uh, you were aware of it, yeah. Mm. You didn't. My grandmother would, would have been more uh, influential in telling me about these mm. things and the Black and Tiles because they lived down in the green area down the quay, you know, where Boffin Street is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandmother lived there and she would tell you stories about the Black and Tiles because they were down the quay and they were pretty involved, I think, in. I won't say gun running, but uh, they weren't activities. Shy. They weren't <laughs> activities, yeah. yeah.